Hi Year 8, I hope you are well and are doing okay. Today is a bubble sort algorithm lesson. Last week we looked at the merge sort and how it divided up into separate little strands, which was really good. Um, today we're going to be covering the bubble sort. It's probably the most difficult one um, in order to get the steps down on paper. This is the slowest, well, one of the slowest sorting algorithms that are out there for a computer. Now, computers want speed and um, everything to be done quickly in a short amount of time, in the most efficient time, and bubble sort isn't very efficient and it's really slow. So what we'll do is um, we'll go over it, but before that, we've got a start to do today. Can you please write down the steps of the merge sort algorithm when sorting 819243? five and six. So please um, pause the video, answer that question, and then come back. All right, guys, so here are the answers um, for that question. Basically, don't forget that the merge sort divides into two each time until they're all separate, and then it's built back together, um, and you get a mark for each correct line. So well done if you answered that correctly. Okay, so the bubble sort, how it works is basically by looking, so you've got a list of numbers and you look at two numbers at the start and if one is higher than the other, you swap them. If it's not high, you leave it the same and you just keep on checking two numbers going all the way up. Then when you've reached the end, if you had a swap by going throughout, then therefore you go right back to the start and this is called a pass. So when you reach the end, you've done your first pass. That basically means you've gone through the whole of the list or array. Um, and not swap a single and, and swap some number. Um, so you go then go back to the, and do the next pass, and you just keep on repeating this until you haven't had a swap. When you haven't had a swap, the whole list is sorted, list or array is sorted. Um, so what I'd like you guys to do, I'd like you to please pause this video, write down these notes, and then uh, I'll show you how to do a bubble sort algorithm. Okay, so bubble sort. On, um, I've got an array here which has got 31782. Now, that word array, don't forget that just means um, we've got a group of numbers and they're all the same data type, so they're all integers here. Um, so, what happens is we've got 31782. So, what we do is this is the original set. We firstly look at three, so we circle it and one. Now, Three is bigger than one, so what we do is we swap. So now we've got one, three, seven, eight, two. Now we like to write a little note down here just saying what we've done. So we will say three was bigger than one, so swap. Okay, so then what happens is you check the next two. So we've got this one and this one. So it's like staircases going down, if you can see, because we're checking the next one each time. Now, three is less than seven, so therefore we stay the same. So one, three, seven, eight, two. And let's write a note, say what happened. Three is less than seven. Uh, we could put stay same or no swap. I'm gonna put no swap. And now we check the next two, which is seven and eight. Now, seven is less than eight, so therefore, no swap. One, three, seven, eight, two. And we say seven is less than eight, no swap. Now we check the next two, eight and two. Well, eight is bigger than two, let's swap. So we've got one, three, seven, and we swap these two, so it's two and eight now. And let's say eight is greater than two, swap. Now, we've reached the end. We've literally reached the end of our array, and we know it's not in order because if we look back, we've had a swap here and we've had a swap here. So we write here, this is the end of first pass. That basically means we've reached the end. So now we need to go on to our second pass. So uh, we go right back to the start all over again and we circle one and three. And we say one is less than three, so no swap. So one, three, seven, two, eight. 
And what happened? One is less than three, no swap. Now let's circle the next two, three and seven. Three is less than seven, so no swap. One, three, seven, two, eight. Three is less than seven, no swap. Now we've got seven and two. And two, uh, is, uh, seven is greater than two, so we swap. One, three, two, seven, eight. So what happened? We said seven was greater than two, no swap. If you could pause the video and write down, write this down with me, that'd be great. So pause the video, write down until we get to this bit and then write the rest with me. So the next part is we've got seven and eight. Seven is less than eight. So here we have no swap. So one, three, two, seven, eight. There we go. So here we said seven is less than eight, no swap. Sorry guys, I've made a mistake um, here. I've got no swap when we actually swapped. We swapped seven and two over, didn't we? So it is swap. Okay now, so we've reached the end. And so what we have is we have a, uh, us at, we've completed our second pass. So we write second pass just here. And I'm slowly running out of space, so I need to extend this down a bit further. Okay, now, because we had a swap between um, in the second pass, we had a swap, so therefore we've got to go again for our third pass. As you can see, it's quite long, the steps here, what we write down. So we've got, next up, we have one and three again. Now, one is less than three, so no swap. No swap. Okay, so now we circle the next two. We've got three and two. Three is greater than two, so therefore we swap. One, two, three, seven, eight. And we said three was greater than two. So swap. And now we circle the next two, three and seven. So three is less than seven, so there's no swap. Okay, so now we circle the next two, seven and eight. So seven is less than eight, so there's no swap. And what have we done? Seven is less than eight, no swap. And we have reached the end of our third pass. Now we had a swap, so we need to go again. So we'll put third pass here. And we go all the way up again. Now you could get away with this and say like in the third pass, you'll go all the way up again and not have a swap, or you could write down the steps. But this instance of me teaching you this, I'm gonna write down the steps. Um, but you could just write a sentence underneath saying that um, the algorithm will continue checking um, for the fourth time in the fourth pass, there will be no swap. So therefore um, the algorithm will stop and the, the uh, array is sorted. Uh, but I'll, I'll do the steps. So uh, let's do our fourth pass then. So one is less than two. So no swap. So one, two, three, seven, eight. One is less than two. No swap. And then we've got two and three. Two is less than three. No swap. One, two, three, seven, eight. So two is less than three. No swap. And then we've got three and seven. 
and that's less than so one two three seven eight three is less than seven no swap and then we've got uh, seven and eight don't write them close together like i did there because then you can make easy mistakes uh one two three seven eight and seven is less than eight no swap we've reached the end of our fourth pass and as there was no swaps so let's have a look back yep there's no swaps then therefore we say stop so that is the steps guys of the bubble sort algorithm i know it's quite long-winded but um those are the steps and stages that take place in this bubble sort, which is why it's the most difficult to answer questions on it. Um, I have done it a very long way. There is improved versions of this bubble sort, so where you don't check the end and stuff like that. But for simplicity for now, um, we'll do it the long way and how it was originally created. But there are other methods and other ways of it being coded. Um, but I've done the long way for you to show you guys. Okay, so uh, what I'd like you to do is now, I'd like you to please answer some exam questions. Okay, guys, can you please answer these questions on the screen? Um, the first two are basically writing down the stages like I did when sorting um, an array of numbers. And this one just here, it says, what will be the contents of L5 after the first pass? So basically, you need to do a bubble sort on these numbers under here. And um, then what you need to do is, after your first pass, you need to say what's going to be in position 5. So will 27 still be in position 5? Will 35 be? Will 6? Will 35? Will 6? 63? Who knows? So uh, do, uh, do the bubble sort on this list array of numbers just here. And then after you first pass, say what's in L5. Uh, that means it means position 5. And then do another pass. So do your second pass and say what's going to be in um, position 7. All right, so pause the video and then we'll go through the answers. All right, so here are your answers for number one. So do pause the video, you get a mark for each line. Um, and then answers for question two. On this one, I just put the sentence in this time to show you how the sentence would look um, as opposed to writing down all of the steps when it's in order. Um, what's going to be in after the first pass of position five is 35. And after the second pass, it's 16. Okay then guys, so that is the end of this lesson and also the end of the module. Uh, next week you're going to have a quiz, a multiple choice quiz. So basically you're gonna to have to do these algorithms and then say what's in positions at various bits and bobs. Um, so can you please do some revision before you do this test? The test is gonna be out next week. Um, have a wonderful week and well done today. Thank you very much, bye-bye.